Donald Trump has earned an additional title to president-elect. He's Time's Person of the Year. In the interview with Time commemorating the honor and the cover, Mr. Trump took that opportunity to put the vice grips on one of the most iconic of American companies, Apple. Quote, this is what Mr. Trump said, quote, I said to Mr. Tim Cook, it's my ambition to get Apple to build a great plant, your biggest and your best, even if it's only a foot by a foot bigger than some place you've already got in China. So, gang, timing's kind of a funny thing. The Time interview coincides with the announcement that Foxconn, Apple's preferred manufacturer of the iPhone in China, is in preliminary discussions to branch out here to the United States. Now, many have criticized what they call Trump's shakedown of U.S. companies since he was elected. I said vice grips, because that can work both ways. It's a little tightening there. Did you see this op-ed in the Washington Post? Former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President George W. Bush, Greg Mankiw, big conservative chops, writes, quote, twisting people's arms is inherently problematic. The president has so much power, you always wonder if there's some implicit threat to individuals that goes beyond what I think a limited government should do. So we thought, let's get him in. And we got him in a Fox Business exclusive. We welcome Greg Mankiw. Thank you for being here. It's nice to be with you. Thank you. Let me play devil's advocate here, Greg. What's wrong, some might ask, with a little arm twisting if the outcome is, is say, jobs saved, lower drug prices for those who can't afford them, and, and new plants built here versus, say, the Philippines? Well, I think President-elect Trump is exactly right that he wants to promote economic growth, and he has a variety of ideas to do that, including a, a more limited regulation, more sensible regulation, a, a better tax code, lower taxes on businesses. So I think he has some good ideas. But I'm particularly worried about intervening in particular business decisions. And there's a big difference between being a CEO of a company and being president of the United States. A CEO is basically a central planner for that company. Mm -hmm. But the president of the United States is not the central planner for the U.S. economy. We don't believe in central planning here. And what we do is we set us rules up and let individual business leaders make decisions for their businesses. And Mr. Trump seems to want to intervene in that process in a way that might not be healthy for the long run of the economy. Well, well, you know, intervene might be an interesting word here. And by the way, it, it works both ways. First, he was involved in carriers saying, you know, if you leave, I'm going to slap major tariffs on you. They did not leave Indiana. He struck some deal there. He looks like a hero, certainly. Um, but then, as I say, it works both ways. Just yesterday, during this hour, we saw that he hugged Masayoshi Son, who is the chairman of SoftBank and Sprint. And during that hug, we started to see Sprint stocks spiking. It did spike yesterday. Look at Sprint today in the wake of him waving and then putting his arm around. We called it the hug heard around the world. Um, with Masayoshi Son, who's been desperately trying to effectuate a merger with T-Mobile. I don't know if T-Mobile wants that kind of hug, but look at Sprint Nextel today, ticker symbol S. It spiked yesterday on the hug, as you see, right around 3 p.m. Eastern. And today it's adding another eight and a quarter percent. So what's problematic here that you foresee? Well, I think what's problematic is that there's no way a president of the United States can know what the right business decision is for the thousands of businesses and mil millions of workers around the economy. Uh, that we fundamentally believe in a market economy. That is decentralized decision making, not decision making centralized in one person, the President of the United States. And yeah, maybe he'll make some good calls, but if he starts making a lot of decisions for individual businesses, he's going to make some bad calls. And uh, I, I fear that he's it's a little bit of overreach uh, here. And I, I think if you're, if you're a believer in limited government, as most Republicans are, and you say, yeah, look, we need to set the rules of the game, low taxes, low regulation, yeah. and let the m m market sort these things out. And I think in the long run, that's better for economic growth. Well, he is inserting himself. And, and, and again, you'd say Rex Nord in Wisconsin. He, there was a little bit of a threat there if they moved to Monterey, Mexico. And then, of course, as I mentioned, Carrier. But um, does it show gutsiness or, or perhaps a fundamental misunderstanding of how companies do whatever they can to stay alive, find the least expensive labor so products can remain affordable to their customers? I mean, ultimately, in a, in a competitive system, some got jobs are going to move here and some jobs are going to move abroad based on what nations have comparative advantage in different activities. Okay. And the consumers ultimately benefit from cheaper products, even if they're produced abroad. So I, I think trying to save every single job 
in the United States is going to make good theater. It's going to show up on TV well and certainly be benefit for a certain subset of workers. But his job is not to look out for a thousand workers here and a thousand workers there. He's got 150 million workers in the United States he's got to look out okay. for. And ultimately, setting the rules of the game and letting the free market make these decisions is going to really is going to be a way to promote economic growth. And I think if a lot of his economic advisors, people like Larry Kudlow and Steve Moore, are believers in that principle. And uh, my guess okay. is behind the scenes, they're not so enthusiastic about some of this micromanagement. Uh, we'll see. But uh, it's, it's nice to hear people caring about the worker. I think that, that the overall, the umbrella picture of that is, is certainly welcome. Greg, it's great to see you. Thank you. My pleasure. Craig Mankiw, Harvard economics professor and former um, chairman of the Council of uh, Economics for the President.